The detector walls for gas-filled neutron detectors, both thermal and fast, are generally about half a millimeter thick and manufactured from stainless steel or aluminum and occasionally in the old days from brass. The performance of all these materials is okay. Stainless steel walls generally absorb about 3% of the neutrons and aluminum walls absorb a completely negligible amount. Aluminum tubes are generally preferred for the finest work because their overall efficiency is a tiny bit larger than those made from stainless steel. Here's a schematic of the electronics for a gas-filled neutron detector. This is basically the same thing that we use for all gas-filled detectors. The lower schematic shows a neutron interaction with helium-3 nuclei inside the tube, producing a triton, a heavy hydrogen nucleus, and a proton, a light hydrogen nucleus. The charge produced by these ionizing particles is collected, fed out through an op amp, and onto the rest of the electronics. The picture to the right shows a bank of these gas-filled neutron detectors buried in polyethylene. The hydrogen in the polyethylene, and the carbon to a small extent, is used to moderate fast neutrons. So the probability of them interacting in the gas of the detectors goes up. Just as with normal gas-filled detectors, we can have ionization chambers as neutron detectors. Uh, the chambers being run in the, in the ion chamber region. This is often used when we have large neutron signals, such as monitoring the power of a reactor. We can also run gas-filled neutron detectors in the proportional region, where we can readily see single neutrons. This is mostly used in research and in detection. And it's at least theoretically possible that you could run uh, a detector as a neutron Geiger counter, but you wouldn't be able to discriminate against gamma rays.